And there are five in the country. We have one right here. Her name is Irma Garcia. She's the athletic director of St. Francis College, Brooklyn. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me, Michael. It's always good to come here and uh, spend time with you. On the last time we saw each other, we were in the zone, right? We were upstairs, and now we're in a brand new surroundings. Still in the zone. Right? We're still in the zone. Yeah. Good, good. What's been going on in St. Francis lately? I know yes. you guys, have, have, in terms of your soccer team, your men's soccer team, you won an NEC conference. Your women's basketball team is catching on fire, and your men are doing quite well, too. Yeah, it's been a pretty exciting year for St. Francis, Brooklyn. I mean, we started out with soccer winning the championship, and we uh, play our game at Pier 5 in uh, Brooklyn Heights, um, and that gave us life. And I think that trickled on to all the students, uh, student athletes. Pretty excited about that. Um, our water polo team did extremely oh, yeah. well. Oh, yeah, always, always uh, competitive. Always, yeah, right. and, and you know, it starts with the academics. Uh, I, I emphasize that. And so we're bringing in kids who really are committed to doing well, just uh, not athletically, but just also academically, So, which is pretty exciting. You started off how many years ago now? You ah, know, five years ago? Right, so? now you're trying to show my uh, age here. Okay. I'm an athletic director. Um, okay. Well, yeah, this is, I'm going into my seventh year. Right, okay. So right. it's pretty exciting. And how much has it has changed for the better since you started? I mean, I know you've implemented several programs. Yeah. Well, my predecessor did a pretty good job, um, and I, he was a great mentor at Aqualung and Dr. Macchiarola, and now I have another great mentor in Brendan Dugan. Um, but they have allowed me to really grow into my role and uh, really adapt a different way of looking at things. And what I like to do is really involve the community as much as possible. I have a great young staff who um, really think outside the box. So we work extremely hard, and that's important. And, and the engagement is really important, so everybody's part of the process whether it's the student athletes, administration, the community. So it's pretty exciting about and that. And there must be a buzz in the St. Francis community now since, I mean, sports-wise, you guys are doing so well, right? Yeah. Especially amongst your alumni and the student body. The alumni is a huge part about success. Um, they really contribute to the students in the sense that they have inter internships and, and things that are available to them for, for them to really know what it's like to be in the real world. At St. Francis, we teach that. We, we don't, they just don't go to class. They get out there and, and understand um, once they get out in the real world, they have the expertise. And big part is due to our alumni who's very generous with their time. Right, last week we had your uh, members of your women's basketball team here along Aren't they with their awesome? coach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a tremendous um, effort on the coach's part to really get in there and teach the game. Um, so once we get the coaches that understand that they have to teach, it, it just takes care of itself. Most of the time, it's just like being in a classroom. Um, you want the kids to get an A, you right. have to teach right, um, and you want them to see the progress. And it's all part of a process. Um, but the kids are buying into it, and it's, it's just a, a great vibe on campus. I, I, it's really uh, a credit to the whole campus um, that, that they're doing extremely well. Right. Well, in, in terms of two years ago, um, we celebrated uh, Title IX. Title IX started in 1972, around the spring of 1972, to level the playing field for women in the workplace and also in terms of college sports. Are we still achieving that goal? And also, has it leveled off a little bit? Well, I'm a living example right. that it, it is only working. one of five. So you're, you're among, <laughs> a, as far as when it comes to athletic directors at the Division One level, you're among a small club. Well, there's actually right? more female athletic directors now, um, okay. and there are more than five now, no. so it's okay. pretty exciting about that. Um, but, you know, when you talk about Title IX and, and opportunity, and that's what it is, it's just opportunities for all students, um, not just for women, but all students. And if we just keep that that opportunity, everything will take care of itself. I mean, why wouldn't you want a female at your helm? I mean, we're, we think outside the box. We have that's, our mommy that's genes. That's true, that's true. <laughs> so we're always caring, uh -huh. and uh, we, we pretty much multitask, even though most people say you don't multitask, but it is part of uh, uh, being an athletic director and thinking what's best for, for the program. What are some of the also goals that you want to achieve as far as athletically in your school? You know, I. I I, I say that this year has been, you know, when I first took the job, I said, I, I just want the teams to be competitive um, and have a good experience, that, that when they leave, they're good citizens and they, they come back and they give back, because that's what it's about. It's a, at St. Francis, it's, it's in giving that you receive. Um, so my goal is just to continue to do good work and, and to be available to 
to all who wants to learn and want to be part of something bigger than they are. Also, getting involved, in especially the challenges. You have LIU down the street. You got St. Francis. All yeah, I know. Oh, all competitors <laughs> and friends, right? Friendly competitors. Keep them close. Yeah, you know? Keep them close. That's true. <laughs> you have Wagner College. Yeah. You have uh, St. John's. How do you go about competing also for that dollar uh, as far as getting folks involved well, in the we, program? We, we recruit differently, and I think everybody has their niche. Um, but you know, whether, whether we're both competing for the same student athlete, we just give them a family atmosphere. Um, they get a sense when they come onto campus that, that they're gonna be taken care of um, because they get to meet the president and they get to meet vice president, meet the, the professors, they meet everybody and they need to meet me in order because I'm the one who signs off on that little contract. Um, so they, they get a sense that it is family and and I, and I like to think that when the parents leave that they know that the student athlete's in good hands for four years. You know, we don't talk about the one year or, you know, what if. We talk about they're going to be here for four years and we're committed to making it right, making them the best student athletes that they possibly can be, and more importantly, be good citizens. Mm -hmm. Also, as a woman, what sort of challenges did you face when you first started as the AD? Was there certain yeah, I, challenges or was it? But there's always challenges, look, whether mm -hmm. you're female or you're, you're male. Um, and like I said, I had great mentors, so um, what most people would be considered challenges, I really didn't have any challenges uh, as being part of a the first, you know, as St. Francis, um, they encourage you um, and, and they help me through some tough times, you know. I mean, you have to make decisions and I was a former coach, so when you're a coach, you make decisions quickly. As an AD, you don't. Mm -hmm. You gotta hear three sides of the story. One side, the other, and the truth. Someone like so. vice president, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> when, in, in terms of this year, you got the NEC, the conference is also expanding. Yeah, well, actually, we lost two, mm -hmm. you know, two schools, two institutions to the MAC, um, but we're pretty solid. I think the commission, which is a female, mm -hmm. Noreen uh, Morris, does an absolutely wonderful job keeping us together and keeping us engaged on what we need to do to make it better for our institution and for the conference. So we're pretty close-knit. Um, you know, John o Suarez over at um, LIU. LIU, he does a great job, and Walt over at, at uh, Wagner and David at FDU, and, and we talk we, we talk often uh, what's best for the conference. Um, you know, when, when I talk at St. Francis, I want to do what's best for St. Francis, but when you talk for the conference, you got to do what's best for the conference. Media exposure? Oh, yeah, you know, um, we started this where um, you can watch all the games for free online, um, and that's every conference game, and you can watch up to four games at one time. Um, so. Media is really important to us. Exposure is really important. And for us at St. Francis, we have a lot of families that are international, um, and they love it. They love it. They've, they've caught on and not only watched their sport, but they're watching other sports as well. Has the Barclays Center, game changer for basketball, um, college basketball, especially here in Brooklyn? You just gave me chills. Yeah. Yes, I, I love the Barclays Center. They've been really kind to us. Uh, John's been really kind to us. We play the LIU uh, teams. Uh, women just played attracted about 400 uh, mm -hmm. spectators, which is exciting. And the men are playing February 16th, a Sunday at 4 o'clock. The funny thing is mm -hmm. that you're playing at the Barclays, but MSG is picking up the game. So they'll be filming the game. So it's pretty, uh, we got the best of both worlds. We got MSG and the Barclays kind of working together. All right. Well, hey, thank